If you have come from watching my video about how to find the errors of plane figures, then you now have four very, very simple formula to use to find the area of the basic shapes that are common in, in school courses. Now, this video is devoted to finding the areas of composite figures. And I want to show you the method I've adopted that I think is a very, very simple one. First I'll show you the way I was taught, and probably the way you were taught, I want to discuss with you. Let's imagine we have a rectangle with a, uh, a triangle, so I'll, I'll put a right angle triangle here, and a semicircle here. Let's make the rectangle um, 15 by 10 metres, I'll put a right angle here and call this 6 and 8. This will be 15, this will be 10. So we have a rectangle, a triangle, and a semicircle. What a lot of students do now, and I presume it happened in my day as well, although we didn't really get away with it very easily, was uh, students would write out 10 times 15 to find the area of the rectangle. So somewhere on the page I'd see 10 times 15 is 150. To find the area of this triangle, they'd multiply 6 by 8 and divide by 2, be somewhere on the page, and then they'd do some calculation, perform some calculation for the area of the semicircle, somewhere on the page. They would add the figures together somewhere on the page and there'd be a total. Frequently students do not leave or do not use a single word to explain what they're doing. And that is most unfortunate because People shouldn't have to search everywhere to find out what's going on. It means also that often for these students, what they're doing is confusing, confu confused in their own mind. An improvement on it is actually to say something like this. Area of the rectangle is. I'm going to write the words of rectangle equals. And now you can go ahead and write your you know, 10 by 15 equals 150, for example. That's an improvement. What I think is a, a greater improvement is to uh, write this equals underneath and, and tidy up the presentation on the page. But still you end up with three separate calculations with a secret, three separate areas and then have to add them together in a fourth calculation to get the total. Here's what I suggest you do. And to do it, we're going to use what are known as subscripts. I'll write the word over here because it's worth your while knowing about it. A subscript, if you understand Latin, is exactly what it says. Sub means underneath, and script means writing. So it's writing that you do underneath the line. So if I write area equals and write length times breadth. I could draw a little rectangle under the line here and that says I found the area of a rectangle. A little picture or a little word, R-E-C-T for rectangle, uh, or, or even A1 for area one, and you put a one inside the, the shape, all the satisfactory ways of identifying the shape that you're finding the area of. Now, I haven't improved it even on that, and here it is. Using subscripts. I recommend that you write the total area is, and you're going to write one long equation. Now the reason I did this is that a few times when I was in school, I forgot, it's easy to do, I forgot to add together all the results, or if I did, I did, did not add all of them up and consequently got the wrong answer. I realised after a while that if I wrote a formula on my first line that had everything in it, and then just worked that formula out to its conclusion, when I got to the end, that was my answer. I didn't have to go hunting for other things or think to add something in or subtract something. It was all there in the one equation. 
And the simple way of handling it so it doesn't get too complex is this. The total area is the area of the rectangle plus, I'll leave a little bit of space, you'll see why in a moment, the area of the triangle plus the area of the semicircle. These little drawings are quite acceptable and it's quite obvious, I think, from these little drawings which part of the diagram we're talking about. If you want to, you can even draw the shape around the same way that it is in the diagram. So this little triangle would look like that. It's not absolutely necessary, but you can if you wish. So what we've said is the total area is made up of these three parts. Now if you have to happen to have a composite that's got a hole in it, so you've got to remove a shape, you just have minus the area of something. Then on the next line, that we've now explained our strategy, on the next line we explain the formulae. And if you come from my last video, we have these four basic formulae. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, it's length times breadth. Plus, how do you find the area of a triangle? It's length times breadth on two. How do you find the area of a semicircle? Well, the area of a complete circle is pi r squared. So what's the area of half a circle? Well, it's half of pi r squared. Well, that's fairly painless. And now we substitute. What's the length and breadth of the rectangle? Well, it's 10 by 15. Remember that the order doesn't matter, doesn't make any difference to the answer. Now, we're going to add, notice I'm lining the equal signs up, and lining, lining the equals and the addition signs up. So everything's in a column, everything's neat and accounted for, very logical. It's not necessary that I use grouping symbols because our order of operations say we do multiplication before addition, but I like to put them in because psychologically it's reminding me to do that. Length by breadth of the triangle. Well, there's our right angle, so we need the two lengths that are attached to the right angle, not this one over here. It's 8 times 6 over 2 and again, I'll put parentheses around that. And the last one, it's pi times... Now, what's the radius of our semicircle? Well, our diagram shows that it's 8 units. Let's call them centimetres. Across the circle, so the radius must be half of 8, which is 4. So it'll be 4 squared over 2. Now at this stage you could put all of that into your calculator and get a complete answer. Or if you wished, you could find each part. Now, I'm going to show each part. 10 by 15 is 150. Half of 8 is 4 times 6 is 24. 4 squared is 16. And half of 16 is 8. So it's pi times 8, or 8 pi. And we can put that in our calculator. It's a little bit easier than the rest. And uh, I realised I don't have it with me. I'm going to have to go and get it and, uh, and do it for you. Just a moment. That was a little bit of an oversight, not having a calculator. But here we go. We type one, 150 plus 24 plus pi times 8 or 8 times pi equals, and again, remember we write out the entire screen, 199.1327412. That will be an approximate result. Very, very accurate, but only to seven decimal places. And then we might say, if we're rounding it off to one decimal place, uh, 199.1 centimetres squared. And there's a simple way of calculating a composite area. Now I could show you an example after this and another one and another one, but it would just draw out the video and I think you get the idea here very, very, um, very quickly. I will in time create a PDF file which will have 
a few of these worked examples in it and then quite a few questions for you to practice with and the solutions of course. And that will be posted on my website, uh, link either here or in the description below the video. And also there'll be a link to the PDF file uh, which will be freely av available to you. Uh, if you found that useful, please leave a comment to that effect below. Please like the video. And of course, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel to find out about the next videos that are coming, which will be Trapezoidal Rule, uh, Simpson's Rule, and Finding Areas Under Curves by Integrating. Thank you for watching.